I never would have dreamed that this would ever be my reality. The force was like nothing I've ever felt. I felt like I was fighting for my life. This thing was under my skin. Say loose her now, demon. I say loose her now. I never believed in exorcisms. You need to go. And never thought possessions were real. Clear the world of the living and disappear without a trace. My name is Hannah Reeder. Carol, stay with me. My name is Carol Andrews. Fight, Carol, you stay with me. <laughs> cast out demons, and if nothing by any means shall hurt me. Say loose her now, demon. I say loose her now. She is sealed. She is sanctified. Leave her now. My name is Carol Andrews, and I'm 50 years old. I have two grown daughters who I'm very proud of, and I've had two antique stores in the last few years. I love antiques. I love researching them as much as I like collecting them. I've known Carol since we were in our early teens. We were raised not far from each other back in uh, Louisiana. I have known Frank all of my life, and we've always had the fun, playful friendship. Carol has a quick wit and a really good sense of humor and a good zest for life. But she was going through a little bit of a difficult time. After going through a difficult divorce, I found myself an empty nester. I had spent my entire life, the first 50 years, doing everything that everyone else wanted. And it was, it was my turn. Carol's divorce really took a toll on her. She really wanted to put things behind her, to move away from Georgia and just start over. I thought, well, let me see what houses are out there. I stumbled across this house in Tennessee. It had a 2,000 square foot marble veranda. It was just beautiful in every way. Carol called to tell me that she had found this really wonderful house. I looked it up online and I thought, man, what a great place. You know, it really was really ornate, beautiful, several fireplaces. It was beautifully built. It was a dream house. I had to have it. And within three and a half weeks, I was moving in. The night I moved into the house, I was very excited. This was going to be my fresh start. I hadn't been in the house five minutes before I heard a voice. Did you call me? I thought it was the mover speaking to me. I left the room again, and I heard two voices. And I stepped back in and I said, are you on the phone? And he said, no, I hear it too. 
I pushed it off. I thought, I'm sure it's just something outside. Probably a week after being there, I was working late hours. And little mischievous things started happening. I would hear little noises. Just like a light little clink. I thought that maybe it was a moth that flew into the window. I would hear these things, but I just would say, this is an old house. Old houses settled. But then it got bigger. I was in the kitchen one day, and I turned around, and every cabinet door had been opened. I thought it was my imagination. But it was only two minutes later There was no way that I could explain that away. That was the first thing that truly frightened me. Carol told me that there were a lot of strange things going on in the house. I started to become concerned. I knew there was something going on. I felt that there was someone watching me, that there were eyes on me. I never felt like I was alone. I started doing things that were completely out of character for me. I used to spend eight hours a day researching antiques. And instead, I started researching witchcraft. I just was getting lost in it. I couldn't get anything done. I never believed in seances, Ouija boards. I would never be a part of anything like that. But I couldn't control it. Carol went from a person that was bubbly and fun, energetic, quick-witted, to a person that was kind of a prisoner of the house. I felt trapped. I felt, how am I going to get out of this? And then things began to escalate.
One night, I was being held down. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream. I wasn't having nightmares. There was something there. I was being held down. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream. I was being assaulted. The force was like nothing I've ever felt. I could not fight this force. After that, I had bruises on both wrists and both ankles. It was terrifying. It got to the point where I didn't want to sleep anymore. It was so upsetting that I had spent all this money investing into this dream house. I just felt like I had lost it all. I started researching the paranormal. I felt like I had nowhere else to turn. Well, when Carol first called me, she seemed pretty distraught. My first thought was, this woman needs our help. And that's why I went over immediately the next day. When I first got to the house, Carol proceeded to give me a tour of the home. And she was showing me the different rooms, telling me where things have been happening. After Carol had gone downstairs, I see this black mass just swoop down the long side of me. Got a little charge through me, kind of like an electric charge. I don't scare easy. Been doing this quite a while, but it, it startled me. Next, we placed digital cameras and voice recorders throughout the house. We asked questions using a ghost box, which is basically a AM FM radio with the antenna taken out, and it sweeps all the stations at a very fast rate, causing white noise, which the spirits can speak through. Stephen asked, who is attacking Carol? Plan to hurt Carol. I was like, holy crap. I wasn't expecting that vulgar, that aggressive. It startled us all. I've never dealt with demons until this case, but the voice that we captured sounded evil as all get out. On one hand, I felt validated. On the other hand, I was terrified. My team couldn't help her. 
This was way more than we were equipped to deal with. The next day, I felt this electricity and like fingertips and this wave. And I thought, could it possibly be under my skin? I needed to see for myself. So I put my phone on record. It was under my skin, literally under my skin. I really thought it couldn't get more terrifying. I knew at that point I needed help. The only thing that was left was to research exorcisms. There's not a lot of listings for those. <laughs> I was really skeptical. I did not think exorcisms could be real. But if it meant that Carol gets back to the right frame of mind, of course, I'm all for it. I found Reverend Bill Bean, and I contacted him immediately. His first response to me was, of course I'll help you. When I first met Carol, I sensed right away that something evil was attached to this lady. God has blessed me with discernment in knowing if someone is really having this type of phenomena going on in their life, and I certainly sense that with Carol. When people are under the possession, they'll mention things like they heard a voice or they saw black form. After the things that she had revealed to me, I had no doubt Carol was under demonic possession. I break the power over all demons, curses, and anything that has been used on Carol. Leave her now, I say. You have no right to claim or deed to her. I say loose her now. I had no doubt Carol was under demonic possession. I never believed in exorcisms. I never would have dreamed that this was real, that this would ever be my reality. Father, by your mighty power and holy name, I have the power over the enemy and his minions. By your power and your holy name, I have the power and authority to cast out demons, and nothing by any means shall hurt me. The first thing I do to perform an exorcism is say specific prayers to begin the process of binding and casting the demons out of the person. Father, by your mighty power and mighty and holy name, I have the power. It's God's power that works through me. So as a man of God, I have the right to cast out demons. I have the power and authority to cast out demons and nothing by any means shall hurt me. I think that I just let my mind go blank. I don't remember a whole lot about the exorcism. I just know that it wasn't like what you see on TV. Over all demons and anything else that has been used or said onto Carol. A struggle was taking place. Carol did exhibit involuntary movements. Her body was trembling and shaking. I bind and break the power over all demons, curses, hexes, psychic warfare, jinxes, potions, bewitchments, pain, torment, incantations, chanting, crystals, rootworms, and anything else that has been used or said onto Carol. Leave her now. Leave her now. Leave her now.
The demons were not leaving her so easily. Yahweh, rebuke thee in Jesus' name. She is sealed. She is sanctified. She is a child of God. There was a high amount of agitation from these demonic entities because they were being evicted from her, and they did not want to go. <laughs> Carol, stay with me. Fight, Carol. You stay with me. Come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Eventually, the demons did show themselves, but they did not identify themselves at all. <laughs> Fight, Carol. You stay with me. This is leaving you. This is leaving you. Come on. Carol. I could feel them lifting off of her. Her eyes totally changed. Her face was glowing. It was the greatest feeling in the world for me. Okay. It was an incredible experience. I went from being terrified and hurt to hopeful and happy. It was just a peaceful letting go. It went from dark to light. I'm ecstatic. I just couldn't be happier to see like Carol's back to her old self. I felt like I was going to get my life back. I was lighter and was very excited about the future. are to leave this child. <laughs> My name is Hannah Alice Reeder, and I am 20 years old. I grew up in Lincoln, Illinois with a big family. The happiest part was my big sister. She always used to love playing with me, and I used to love going outside, playing in the yard. I remember those times of being happy. But when I was 11 years old, my parents, they got divorced. I stayed with my dad and lived in Lincoln, Illinois. Hannah's decision was to stay there because of school. But her relationship with her father was very tumultuous. She was growing and maturing without any guidance. We were overjoyed to have Hannah move from Illinois to Texas with us. But it was very hard on Hannah. It really was hard to get comfortable in a new school, making new friends. It was a rough transition for me. I eventually made new friends, and one of those friends was Troy. We connected instantly. I just loved being around him. He always made me laugh. And then we started dating and I went to his house almost every weekend. <laughs> the very first night I spent the night with Troy at his parents' house, I went to sleep in his room and he went to go sleep in the living room since we couldn't be in the same room together. It was about 1 a.m. I heard music. It sounded like it was coming from an old record player. But there was no stereo in his room. There was no radio, nothing in his room that I could see where the music was coming from. When I went into the living room, 
the music stopped. Troy was passed out. The TV was off. It was completely silent. I really thought, maybe you're just tired. Maybe you thought you heard music. And I just accepted it as that. But then I heard it again. That same tune, night after night. It just kept happening. I could not figure out where it was coming from. I just thought my mind was playing tricks on me. A few days later, I was lying in bed, just dozing off. Right when I was starting to actually get sleepy, I felt a real tight pressure in my chest. It just got tighter and tighter. I was lying in bed, just dozing off. All of a sudden, <laughs> I felt a real tight pressure in my chest. It felt like someone was taking their hands and just kept pushing on my lungs. I knew I was being attacked, but I wasn't sure by what. Eventually, it let go. After all of this, I really felt like I was starting to lose control. I didn't feel like myself. I was so depressed because I was the only person going through this. I didn't tell my mom because I, I thought she would have thought I was crazy. I started to notice a change in Hannah. She became quite distant. Days where she wouldn't talk to us. She wouldn't look at us. She'd stay holed up in her room. This was not like the Hannah I knew. I thought it was just the age, her attitude, like most late teens. You know, they get a little chip on their shoulder. They think they're dolls. So that's pretty much what I chalked it up to. One morning, I noticed it was awfully quiet. Hannah had vanished. The closet was empty. The posters on the wall, the pictures, everything was gone. I had no idea where she was. I called the police. I printed up posters. I posted them all over town. We drove to every place we could think of where she might be.
The Hannah I know would not have moved in with her boyfriend without telling me. Why I did it, I still couldn't tell you. It really did not make any sense to me. It felt like something was making me do this. It wasn't me. All these strange things started to escalate. One night, I happened to look straight up at the ceiling. There was something staring down at me. And I felt something grab my ankle. There were these two eyes just staring down at me. And I felt something yank my leg. Right after that, I felt a hand go right in the middle of my back. It freaked me out, so I screamed for Troy. There was a giant red hand mark in the middle of my back. Troy said, Anna, maybe you're right. Maybe there is something here. And he told me that his house is on an Indian burial ground. After that night, I didn't want to stay in that house anymore. I decided to end it with Troy and move back with my parents. It felt safer to me. When Hannah moved back home, we were really hoping that things would get back to normal. But it was like the same negative energy followed me to my parents' house. I began having this uncontrollable anger towards my mother. I started to yell things like, I hate you, I want you dead. It was my voice, but it wasn't me saying it. It felt like something was telling me to say this. I've had these thoughts of killing her, and it, it, it was terrible. Like, why would I have those thoughts about my mother? That wasn't me, and I knew something was wrong. The fighting between Hannah and, and, and her mom was, was intense. That wasn't Hannah. She was almost not in her own mind. I knew it was about time to tell my mom what happened to me at Troy's house. Everything. When Hannah finally talked to me, I knew, OK, we've got to take this one step further. We have to get some resolution for this kid. I knew I had to do something to save my daughter. I'm an ordained minister, and I have been dealing with the paranormal for the past 20 years. 
Bella called me and explained to me everything that was going on with her daughter, Hannah. I told her that we would do whatever we could to help her. The moment I stepped onto Yvonne's yard, I felt sick. I, I wanted to dash. I didn't want to be there. I knew immediately that there was something serious going on with her. There weren't any emotions at all. She had this look like looking straight through you. I knew this child is in trouble. The moment Hannah arrived at my home, I knew immediately it had become a life or death situation. The attachment was pretty dark, and it had taken control of her. I knew I had to get to work immediately. What I do is a little bit different from the exorcisms that you see on TV. I have a team of four people who are all paranormal experts. And our main goal is to target the entity and get it to leave. Yvonne told me to just relax, but I was nervous. I kept getting more tense, and I, I, I just hated everybody there. The first thing that we do is form a circle. And we have different prayers that each one of us will say. May the wind blow you, wandering ghost, and clear the world of the living, turn you to where you belong, and may you disappear without a trace. Everybody in the room felt the anger was the actual entity trying to fight back with us I could feel the energy in that room. The hair stood up on your arms and on the back of your neck, and your feet tingled and your hands tingled. Leave this child as of right now. Return to from which you came. We could tell that Hannah also felt it. She would stiffen up. She would shake. It's too long. It's time for you to move on and go back to where you came from. I remember me getting weak. I wanted to pass out. It, it was a gut-wrenching feeling, and I just wanted to vomit. Does everybody in the circle feel the vibration in our arms? Yes. yes. I can feel it. The circle feel? We could feel the energy of this thing just building and building. And we could feel a big change because she was starting to stand her ground. She had had enough. You need to go. Get out of my life. Be you need to go. I felt like I was fighting for my life, and I was scared if I didn't fight hard enough, I was going to lose. You have nothing to do with me anymore. Now it's time for you to go. I could feel the attachment leaving. Hannah was finally free. I didn't even realize I was crying. Is it over? I feel amazing. Amazing? I'm still got goosebumps. I do share. Whenever I opened my eyes and looked up, I seen my mom, and I told her, Mom, I love you. I'm so sorry for everything that happened. I gave her a big hug. We cried, cried, cried. I have never been so happy to see her in my life.
When Hannah raised her head up and I saw her beautiful eyes, the dimple in her chin, that's when I knew that my child was back. I never believed that exorcisms were real. But witnessing Hannah's exorcism does make me believe that they are real. They're not just made for TV. We all saved Hannah. I truly believe that if Yvonne and her group had not helped us, my daughter would not be here today. But life today with Hannah is awesome. And Hannah could conquer anything she wants to now in life because she doesn't have something or somebody dragging her down. Was I possessed? I believe so. I wouldn't be telling the story if I wasn't. These tears you see, they're real. The story you're hearing is real. And I'm here to share my story. Nothing more.